time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. Now, if you guys have been following the news, you know that recently NASA sent the first 3D printer into space. More specifically, they didn't just throw it out there willy-nilly, it went to the International Space Station during a resupply mission. Now, this printer was designed by a California-based company called, wait for it, Made in Space. Now that's a company name that gets the point across. Now this 3D printer that they're using up there was designed to work in zero gravity, but it's not all that dissimilar from the Ultimaker or the Robo 3D. It basically just extrudes filament and builds things up layer by layer. Now this first generation printer that they're using only prints in ABS, that's it, no other materials. So we've got a lot more freedom down here on the ground. Well, recently, Commander Barry Wilmore was overheard on a radio transmission to ground control saying that he had a need for a wrench. Now, if you guys know how the whole NASA thing works, if he wants a wrench, he can't just like go to the hardware store module on the space station. He has to pretty much wait for a resupply mission, and that could be months. But not with a 3D printer. As soon as the Made in Space guys heard about this need for the wrench, they jumped right on it, and they basically used CAD to mock up and design a fully functional ratcheting wrench that could be printed as a single part on a filament extrusion based printer, otherwise called FDM. Now NASA being NASA and as cool as they are, they basically released the plans in the 3D model for this wrench publicly and there's a link down in the video description. But for this video, we're gonna print this wrench out and see how it works down here on Earth where I weigh almost 300 pounds. God, sometimes I wish I was in space. All right guys, so the first thing that we need to do is actually go download the model. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Chrome right here. You can see um, over on the NASA website, this little URL up here will be in the video description, but they have the wrench right here and it says made by Made in Space and also in a joint venture with NASA MSFC. So right here, and you can see it's fairly new too. It was published on December 23rd, which wasn't that long ago. Now they said that this isn't the first 3D printed object in space. This is true. The actual first objects that came off the 3D printer, for those of you that are wondering, were replacement parts for the printer. That's the cool thing about 3D printers is a lot of the parts on them, like the cogs and stuff, are all replaceable by the printer itself. Like the printer can reproduce itself largely. So they did that. They produced a lot of parts first to test the printer and to replenish the printer if it breaks. And then they printed this. But you could say this is the first functional tool that they printed in space. All right, let's go ahead and open up Cura. Here I already have the STL file loaded. And you can see it does, in fact, look like a wrench. So they managed to actually make it look like what it's supposed to be. Um, I know some things that NASA does, like the toilets and things like that, tend to look a little different. But uh, over here, you can see it says it's rated for three inch pounds. Now, on the space station, they printed this in ABS plastic. Well, I wanted to mix it up a little bit down here. So I'm going to go ahead and print it in a couple different types of materials. Now, I want to show you guys the mechanism. So I'm going to go over here in Cur and I'm going to switch to X-ray mode. And you can see that this all prints as one piece but it's actually some separate pieces that all build from the base of the platform. You have this right here, which is a gear. You can see this little gear floating around in here. And then you have this little guy right here, which is the little stopper that hangs up on each of the teeth to create the ratcheting motion. And the cool thing about this item is that you're printing a moving gear inside of this wrench while you're printing the whole thing a layer at a time. So it's not like a lot of the other moving part stuff. Like if you saw my video that was very popular, where I created a three gear reduction, uh, reduction transmission. Uh, it was all printed in separate parts and then assembled. This is cool because they found a way to design it to where it can just be printed as one piece popped off and used. That's pretty cool. All right, so now I'm gonna do two prints with this. I'm gonna do one in PLA plastic, which is the most common plastic used down here on Earth for 3D printing. And the main reason why it's used is because it doesn't warp nearly as much as ABS under extreme temperature and cooling, which makes it ideal for printing. And it's also a very, very rigid material, whereas ABS is much more flexible. Now I'm also gonna print another material called XT by ColorFab. Now that material that I'm printing in is actually closer to ABS in the temperature that it melts at and its characteristics as far as being able to bend it and flex it and stuff like that. But it doesn't have the massive shrinkage problems that ABS has. So it's, it's a very, very good material. So I figured we'd give those two a try. Now for, I'm gonna do two prints. I'm gonna do one in 0 0.1 
layer height because I want it to be really, really fine detail. I'm also gonna use a 100% infill. And the reason for that being is since this is a tool, I want it to be as strong as humanly possible. So we're gonna print both completely solid. Now for the print speed, we're gonna go with 50 millimeters a second on the Ultimaker 2, because this just gives you a very, very beautiful print. All right, if we go to the layer view, you can see it's actually building up. There's all the 3D printed layers. And you can go down, this is how the printer is going to print from the bottom up so you can get an idea of what it's gonna look like. And it's kind of cool to see how these 3D printers work. Because, I mean, it's literally like a regular printer printing on a page of paper. But just imagine you keep adding another sheet of paper printing, adding another sheet of paper and printing and cutting off the excess and then gluing all those pieces together. You would get something very similar. All right, well, let's get this over to the printer. Okay, so here we have the first wrench off the printer. You can see right here, it printed very, very beautifully. This was in the 0.1 millimeter layer height. Now you can see the gear inside, I broke it free. It was fused to the model. When I first took it off the printer, it didn't work in a ratcheting motion. It was like one solid piece of plastic. So I had to bang it on the desk a bunch, and then I went and got one of these, which is a little extension. And I put the extension on, you can see it actually fits really well. The tolerances on this model are great. And I had to actually like kind of work it back and forth until it broke free. Once it broke free, it actually works as a ratchet. But you can see it slips every once in a while. Now, it didn't slip when I first printed it. This is after I played with it for about a, about a half an hour. Um, it started getting weaker and weaker. And that's because the PLA doesn't have a lot of flex to it. So the little teeth on the gear in there are getting worn off. And so PLA is not a good material to print this in. It really isn't because it wears out super, super quick. And as you can see, I can actually work the ratchet backwards depending on what tooth I'm caught on. So PLA is out. Now here is the wrench that I printed in ColorFab XT, which is the more ABS-like material. And one thing I noticed about it, same thing, it fused together. I had to break it free and same thing. I had to put this guy on there and work it back and forth, but then it came free but the nice thing is it doesn't wear out and the ratchet is much louder and pronounced. Listen. It sounds like a real ratchet. This material doesn't wear out nearly as easy. And I also noticed after using it for a while, this is much tighter. Notice how that just moves a little bit in there. It's not like on the other wrench where, I mean, look, look how much that thing moves. I mean, it's like a joystick. So the XT is more like the ABS material and the more likely candidate for a good material to print a wrench in. But I, the thing I really loved about it was when you put it on there, I mean, it feels like a wrench. You feel each little ratcheting tooth. You can see that. Here, I'll even let you guys listen. It sounds like a wrench, but that right there is a functional tool. All right, so I went ahead and got a real wrench to go with our little 3D printed NASA wrench, and I got us an assortment of sockets and extensions. So let's go try to take some bolts off my car and see what happens. All right, here we are under the hood of my 2005 Subaru WRX STI. We got lots of bolts to play with, but let's get started with the battery. All right, so here we have the negative terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and put a reducer on this, just like that. Now notice it doesn't snap on like a real wrench, it just slides on there. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a little uh, 10 millimeter socket. There we go, it's on there. You can see it has a little bit of flex to it, but not too bad. Let's go ahead and put it on there. And we run into our first problem. Notice it only ratchets in one direction and it doesn't have a selector switch. So it's only good for tightening things down. See how this one has a selector switch? That'd be cool if they could 3D model one with a selector switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this up. Now you can see that's free. Let's go ahead and put it on there. All right, now I'm gonna tighten it back down using the plastic wrench and see how tight I can get it comfortably. Okay, there it's starting to ratchet on its own. Spin in.
Oh, that feels, that's remarkably strong. Oh, it slipped. See, it slipped right there, but that is on there good. Now I did notice that even after it slipped, the ratchet still works fine. See, I'm holding the shaft really tight with this hand and turn net. It's not slipping. Well, I decided there was really no point in taking any more bolts off the car since the wrench can't take a bolt off, it can only tighten it. And we already found its threshold just tightening down the battery terminal. But in a nutshell, I was pretty damn surprised with the ColorFab XT printed wrench and how much torque I could put on it before it slipped. That was actually pretty amazing. Just to give you an idea, I didn't even tighten that bolt any further using the real wrench afterwards. It was that tight that I was confident that thing's never coming off. But I gave it a little thought and instead of having to 3D print one of these that has a selector switch in it, if you want one for taking a bolt off, all you have to do is mirror the 3D model. If you mirror the 3D model in a program like ColorFab or something like that, you basically move the mechanism to the other side and change the direction that it ratchets in. And then you basically just label them. You have one for tightening and one for loosening. But I'm pretty sure those NASA guys already figured that out. Didn't you, NASA? Didn't you? So I have to say that stuff like this just fascinates me, guys. The fact that you can print something that's functional and has moving parts in it is just mind-blowing in itself. But the fact that you can actually print a tool that you can use to help build something else is pretty damn remarkable. Now, if you guys have any questions that I didn't answer, go ahead and leave them down in the comments or you can come over and tweet me. I am at Barnacles over on the Twitter. Also, if you guys wanna see behind the scenes, I have an Instagram account too. You can find the link in the video description. I post lots of pictures of stuff as I'm doing it. So you can kind of get an idea of what's coming up next. And I do really enjoy making these videos for you guys. It's the highlight of my day. I'm absolutely loving this as my new career path. Wouldn't change it for anything in the world, except for maybe like $50 million and, and unmarked bills. But I doubt that's ever gonna happen, so I'll just keep on making videos. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time. What? Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also, come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.